I am Michael. I am Matthew. And I am John. And, and we are great and garmently students here in the Negros Occidental High School of Bacolod City. Learning carpentry is exciting and there are so much that you can do. A wide variety of wooden projects and wooden furniture. And do you know that we can even build a house or a small structure using our knowledge and skills in carpentry? Yes, that is exactly true. And since Michael made mention about building houses, today we will be talking and teaching you how to start out the construction of your house. Construction, basically. Start with identifying the exact location of your house and we cannot just simply get our tools and immediately start digging and pouring out cement mixtures right away. These are certain principles that one should observe. I totally agree with you, John. These principles like squareness, plumpness, and levelness are very important skills that carpenters like you and me should learn. But before going any further, to our main topic today, which is taking out building lines. I guess we should be familiar first with some of the tools and materials needed to accomplish this carpentry task. Alright, so guys, what are you waiting for? Let's go ahead and identify these tools and materials used in taking out building lines. What can you see here are tools and materials used in taking out building lines. These tools are combination of different cl classes ranging from measuring, cutting, and testing tools. Each has their own unique function just like us. Yeah, it's awesome, Mike. And you know, one, one, what one must also know how to use these tools properly. Because if you don't, you might as well end up hurting yourself. So always remember, safety first. So let's start identifying the tools and materials needed in taking out the limits. Starting with one regular measuring tool called the pull push rod. This tool is used to measure. Basic tool for measurement for us as carpenters to know the dimensions of our measurements of a project or work. While this one is called bolo, a sharp tool used to make these stakes pointed to easily penetrate the ground with the aid of this tool called sledge hammer. Mark, can you tell them more about this tool? Sure thing, Mike. Sledgehammers are heavy duty types of driving tools. They are designed to smash concrete walls and floors and other jobs that entail heavy pounding. That's it. Anyway, as we continue, this piece of wood is called stakes. We'll be needing a minimum of four stakes for small floors, floor areas, and more are needed as the area increases in size as well. Together with a sledgehammer, they are proven long-time partners. By the way guys, we'll also be needing some testing tools like the framing square and house level. Likewise, we will also use the bar level along the way. Let's focus with the framing square. This tool is used to test the squareness of our building line. And the house level will make us sure that our floor line is horizontally level. But I'm kind of wondering how do you use this host level? It's simple. All you need to do is to fill the transparent host level with water. You also need to make sure that the water inside it is level. Usually, the water inside the host level will not level if there are bubbles inside it. So we need to, make, to get rid of them. Oh, I see. That sounds interesting. And what about this piece of string? These are nylon strings. They are used to outline the exact equation of the building line being attached to these pieces of lumber called the butter boards. Butter boards are horizontal part of, the, of our horizontal boards placed at the corner and at the sides of the projected building when final layout takes place. And lastly, they will also be using cross-cut soft. To eliminate excess portions of our, of our butter points or stakes as we perform the task, I guess we're all ready for the next big thing. Yeah, definitely we are now all set to hit the beta flood to practice and learn more on staking out building lines. Guys, let's go!
before we begin with the scarf and activity, we should remember to complete to wear a complete set of PPE or personal protective equipment. Basically, for this activity, we will be needing a hard hat or helmet like this. And always remember, safety. Well said, Matt. Now let us start with step one. Let's say the total floor area is 4 by 4 feet with a 2 meter distance from the pavement. We'll be needing the pole push roll to accomplish these preliminary steps. So from the pavement, we will be extending our pole push roll to 2 meter going to the vacant lot. Then we will drive our first temporary state. We will be doing it again using the length of the floor area to establish the orientation line. After establishing the orientation line, we will then enclose the floor area using the dimensions given and install the remaining temporary stakes. After which, we will prepare our butter boards by placing them on the ground 0.5 meters away and around the temporary stakes. By the way guys, what do you think are butter boards? Butter boards are horizontal boards placed at the corner and at the sides of the projected building when final layout takes place. The reference for our foundation is marked on these boards. The intersections of these butter boards will serve as a reference where to drive our corner stakes. We will drive all the four corner stakes to the ground firmly using sledgehammer. We have to remember that two people are needed to perform this activity. One will be holding the stake and the other driving the sledgehammer. Please take note as well that these two people should not be facing each other while driving the stakes to the ground. Instead, they should be working side by side as you notice in the picture. After all the corner stakes have been securely placed on the ground, we will then decide the height of our floor area. Let's say the height is 12 inches. Using the pole push roll, I will be marking 12 inches on the stake, starting from the ground. This stake will serve as a reference later in leveling horizontally the floor area. To the remaining stakes using the water hose level, or just hose level. The hose level is another essential tool for most carpenters like us. It is used to establish the horizontal levelness of our floor area with a tolerance of plus minus 3 millimeters. Tolerance is the margin of error that a carpenter should observe. Let's say your measurement exceeds 3 millimeters or falls short of 3 millimeters then your work becomes inaccurate and can cause serious problems or dangers too. Just a tip as well, we need to check if the water inside the hose level is free from bubbles and the water in both sides of the hose is of equal height. To do this step, one person will go to one of the corner stakes holding the other end of the hose and one will use the markings we did earlier in the stake as reference in aligning the mark and water inside the level hose. Take note that your partner should refrain from moving the hose while doing the alignment process. You will be waiting until the water level inside the hose level stops in the markings you did earlier. Once the water stops on the exact floor height, I will then tell or notify the other person to mark the stakes as using the water level inside the hose. We, we will be marking the remaining stakes using the hose level as our reference for the next step. After all the stakes have been marked, the next step is to fasten the butter boards using a claw hammer and pieces of nails. Since we are fastening a 1 by 2 inches of wood to a 2 by 2 inches of wood, the ideal nail size should be one and a half inches. We have to reinforce the corner stakes as well while we are attaching the butter boards by letting someone hold a piece of wood directly at the back of the corner stakes to counteract the force while the butter board is being attached, keeping the corner stakes in place. After all the butter boards are attached, we will then measure 0.5 meter from the corner stake going to one part of the butter board and drive a nail. Make a slip knot using the nylon string and attach it to the nail going to the opposite side of the butter board. From the corner stakes of the opposite butter board, measure another 0.5 meter and drive a nail to it. 
attach the nylon string to the nail to form the first corner of our building line. But this corner should be tested with its squareness using a framing square. One should be in charge in making the necessary adjustment until the corner is squared with tolerance of plus minus 0.5 mm. After which, we are now going to measure the length and the width of the floor area using the corner or L shape formed by the nylon string as our reference. We will continue doing this step until we enclose the floor area with the nylon string. Again, be very accurate in squaring the corners of the building lines using the framing square. And the enclosed area made by the nylon strings will serve as your building line, where excavations for wall and posts will take place. This is very important because without these building lines, the construction will not progress into the next level. And that completes the process of our task this day. Oh, by the way, before we end, we also need to check if our work is accurate in terms of squareness by measuring the area diagonally. If the two diagonals are equal, then the building line is accurate and is now ready for the next step in building the structure. That ends our carpentry activity for now on staking out your units. We hope to see you again next time. Till then, goodbye for now. This is John, Michael, and Matthew signing off.